RTA Season 15 is coming to an end, and even if you don't play RTA, you should be excited because that means one big thing. Balance patch time. Not only is RTA Season 15 coming to an end, but we are done with SWC Season. So generally speaking, during SWC Season and the regular RTA Season, Comps to Us does not like to change anything in the meta. They don't need to, they don't like to shake things up. They like to keep things consistent. And then after both of those things, uh, historically speaking, after both of those things, um, we tend to see some larger than usual balance patches. So they don't have to worry about SWC, anything interfering with SWC. They don't have to worry about anything interfering with the end of RTA season. They're like, okay, now is when we're gonna do more aggressive balance patches. So I know a lot of you guys are very excited. You're like, please buff my, buff my units. I have all the bad ones, please. Or give me a good one. Make the, the make the net fives that I have super meta. And then you don't realize that like there's like thousands of people that have the same net fives. And then when yours are good, theirs are also good. And then you have to fight against theirs. And like, oh man, why why they buff this? They over buff this now. Nerf this unit. So anyway, uh, today we're gonna go over some of the units that I think need buffs or uh, need buffs or, or maybe even nerfs more than others. First things first, let's just get this off the table right now. All of these Street Fighter units that people spent so much money on, so much money for these Street Fighter scrolls, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, most of these Street Fighter units are not good. They're just not good. Let's be real, they're just not good. Um, not all of them, some of them are actually very good, but most of them are kind of underwhelming. The Fire Doll Seam, aka Todd, very situational and not even that good in those situations where he's supposed to be very good. Uh, he's basically not, he's like the lowest tier of nothing. Um, this guy's actually not that bad. I've played with him, I built him on two accounts, he's actually not that bad. This one is fine, I don't think he really needs too much. Um, this one, I haven't played with him, I'm not very excited to play with him. He's kind of like a less version of a Camomere. And you, that's why you don't see anyone using him, right? So this is just a less, again, same thing as the uh, Jarrett, the Wind Poison Master, lesser version of a Cam. I mean, you can't make him a better version of a Cam here. Not that these units should really be great for everything, but like at least make them really good for one thing. If they're good for like one PVE dungeon or one PVE thing, like if, if this was a fantastic unit for like Giants B12 and sped up everyone's runs, like, oh yeah, this is a really nice uh, this and that. Um, it's just not, uh, it's just, it's, it's just not, oh, oops. Uh, it's just not that exciting, right? So, so this one, this one, uh, not that exciting. Uh, this one's fine. Light Doll Seam, I think the biggest thing here, I mean, Dungeon Resistance Leader Skill is basically not even a leader skill. The biggest thing here is his skill three. Let's take a look at the Yoga Flame skill three. Um, damage blocks beneficial effects and destroys the enemy's max HP by uh, some of the damage dealt. I feel like he needs to be a damage dealer. Um, he's got some uses, not many, but he does actually have some uses. Destroy HP and block beneficial effects. There's some uses for that. However, um, he's just a support unit. Like, he really should, like, it would, it, just giving him some damage. Giving him some damage in some kind of Guild War leader skill. Because I could see him being used in some Guild War situations, but... Because that's the only play, like destroy HP. You don't you don't use that in Pv uh, in PVE, right? So he's not going to be used in RTA. He's not going to be used in arena offense. He's just for Guild War situations. So make him at least do some damage. Because you're limited to three units in 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 a Guild War Guild Siege fight. So you need them to do more than just destroy HP, but not really do that much damage in the process or block beneficial effects. Like you need things that like do damage or heals or defense breaks or tag power buffs in the same time. Um, so he just doesn't do quite enough. I think the easiest way to fix him is just give him a Guild War leader skill. I, they're not doing Guild War leader skills. They're all doing dungeon leader skills for these. Um, give him a Guild War leader skill and give him some damage on this. Either make him like an HP bruiser would be great. Uh, that, that, that would be the, the optimal situation is to make him an HP bruiser. Uh, and then he would actually not be that bad. Uh, this guy's already a fantastic unit. Again, these dungeon leader skills that they like to put them on. I don't necessarily think that these are dungeon units, but, um... Yeah, anyway, uh, this guy's already good. So let's go over to the Chun-Li's, okay. Fire Chun-Li, she's usable. She's not the most premium unit in the world, but she's usable. She's got her attack age boost. She's got a crit buff, uh, a speed buff. 
she is a unit that you could use. Uh, Water Chun-Li definitely needs a higher damage multiplier. That's her big thing. It's not that her skills are bad, it's that her multiplier is terrible. Um, her multiplier is terrible. That's the reason. Because uh, she's, on paper, she's so fantastic, right? So fantastic. In use, she doesn't do enough damage. Uh, Win Chun-Li, maybe same situation. I don't know. Wins are just... It's really hard to make wind units meta because everything has to be compared to, like, Lucian Copper. Or if it's a CC unit, it needs to be compared to, like, Hathor and now Xiong Pung uh, and some other crazy wind units. There's a lot of strong wind units, so... Um, I don't think that there's much that could be done to many of these wind units to make them better than some of the super premium wind units out there, but uh, she could use, like, maybe some more damage multiplier or something. I don't know. A little, little something, uh, at the very least. No buff needed! No, no buff needed. She's fine. <laughs> She's plenty fine. She needs no buff. Um, she, yeah, she needs no buff. 120 base speed, insane, ridiculous damage, 200% damage multiplier. Oh my god. Okay, so the Dark Chun-Li, some people like her, some people don't like her. Uh, the people that don't like her, I don't think, are using her as well as they could. She is kind of like the Dark, like, when I think about the Dark Unicorn, which I have, I think, hmm, she's, uh, she's mathematically good, her skills are good, everything is good, she just doesn't fit into the meta as much because she doesn't have anything that strips. If she did strips, I mean, if she, if she did strips, she would be, uh, too OP, right? But this one is like basically just a dark unicorn that strips. I mean, she has nat four stats, but still, she's not a she's not a terrible unit. She's uh she's pretty good. I think the biggest things uh for these actually are just I think the biggest thing is just this a uh, water kung fu girl. Water Chun Li needs a higher damage multiplier, and this uh, wind Chun Li needs a little something too. Next up are the Ryu's and the Strikers. They are the same units. So Douglas the Fire Striker, same as the Fire Ryu, same skills. One is the Comptuous version, one is the Street Fighter version. I've said this a million times, you guys already know. I'm sure like 100% of the people at this point know what I'm talking about. Uh, since it's in the game like that, and now everyone's had a chance to see it firsthand. Anyway, uh, Fire Fire Ryu and Fire Striker. So this guy I actually have on my China server account. Um, he is a cool unit, and I could be wrong about what I'm going to say about him. As soon as he's able to be used in RTA, you could actually see him being used against... Uh, the Chiwu and Xiongpung teams, um, and like the Ganymedes and things like that. In the same way that you see other units with uh, passives taking turn two, he gets the glancing hits on him. Um, in the same place you see, for example, like Molly's being used, or like Fire Monkey's being used, or Laika's being used, or things like that. He's not quite Laika. Um, he's got this passive where he gets uh, glanced on if the enemies, or, or a higher chance for him to be glanced on if the enemies attack power is lower than your attack power, but um, he doesn't really do too much when he does it. Like, he doesn't stun, right? Maybe we should put him on despair. Uh, I mean, maybe we should put him on despair. I don't know. But he doesn't uh, He doesn't stun naturally. He just does... Uh, he does? He does an attack power break, and he does a... Uh, potentially procs into Shoryuken, and does a, a brand. So... I mean, he, again, he's he's kind of in that passive situation where he's similar to... I'm going to loosely, loosely similar to things like Ardenbiel, Wind Monkey, uh, Fire Monkey, Molly, Laika. Like, in that same family of, like, you pick him in those same situations. Not that he is just like those units. You pick him in those same situations of where you would pick those units. Um... The thing with him, though, is, like, to get him to, to activate his passive as much as possible, you have to put high attack power on him, so that makes him less tanky. Um, so you can't run him, like, as too much of a tanky bruiser, even though I think that he should be more of a tanky bruiser. Giving him some kind of, a, a little bit something more to uh, to stay alive longer, to, to, to activate his passive more, uh, without worrying about him dying. So I think he's on the right path, he just needs to be tweaked a little bit more to make him a little bit more tankier, or a little bit more of a threat when he interrupts things, right? Like a stun or something. Uh, anyway, on to... Uh, no, well, well, we'll get to you, Wind Ryu. Uh, on to the Water Ryu. I personally, this is one of my more wanted units. I think that you're going to see how useful he actually can be when he's able to be used in RTA. I don't think that he really needs anything right now. I say wait and see how he is in RTA. Uh, because that's where I feel... 
as soon as he's able to be used. And maybe we don't see any of these uh, Street Fighter units used in, uh, or, or in this balance patch because they haven't been used in RTA yet. So Comp to us is like, we're going to wait again on these Street Fighter units. I hope they don't wait, but I could see why they would maybe want to wait just to see how they how useful they are in, uh, in RTA. But I guess we'll see. I don't want to wait more for this uh, win for you to get buffed. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to him though. But yeah, I think this is this is going to be like these two are going to be potentially units that are actually used in RTA just as they are, as like interruption kind of units. So like turn two, like if the enemy's taken turn one, you could potentially pick some of these units uh, for turn two. Uh, Wind Ryu. So Wind Ryu is. Um, an interesting unit. Wind Ryu is actually not bad on paper, right? Wind Ryu is uh, not bad. He's a he's basically like a wind daftness. Attacks the enemy to remove all beneficial effects. The enemy had no beneficial effects after the attack. Uh, weakens defense for two turns if you successfully weaken defense. Attacks the enemy with a powerful finishing strike. So the thing about this though is like if you already had a strip and a defense break on him, then he doesn't need to he doesn't need to be the one that specifically needs to do this. If he already had a strip and a de if the other units had a strip and a defense break already then he will just do all three of his attacks. I think the biggest thing here is just a damage increase. I think we may just see, like, if there's a damage increase, that that may be it. That may be all he needs. Um, so, yeah, it, it may just be that easy. Uh, Light Ryu is awesome. He's very fun to use. Uh, he's like a an Alicia, a water polar queen. And then the Dark Ryu... We, uh, he does not need to be buffed anytime soon. We need to see how crazy he can be in RTA. Some people say that they think that he's uh, not going to be that crazy in RTA. We're making a big deal about it. Um, and some people are like, he's going to be broken in RTA. He's going to need a nerf as soon as Comp to us figures out how broken he is in RTA. We'll see, because his uh, third skill, PPK combo, uh, is pretty, pretty nuts. We've seen it. We've tested it out. We've seen how brutal it can be in Arena. But we haven't seen how brutal it can be in RTA, so we will potentially see how crazy it can be. Um, I think the biggest one, I think the biggest thing is just making him more tanky and making him uh, do more damage for for these ones. They don't need uh, they don't need to be buffed as crazy. Maybe you know what? Maybe these uh, the Bisons might need to be buffed a little bit more. Now on to the Bisons. Now uh, Bisons and the um, Slayers. So. So the biggest thing that um, the biggest thing with these bisons and slayers that anyone that has summoned them has uh, and tried to build them has noticed is that they are they're tanky bruisers, but they don't really do that much damage. So they're just there for like whatever their skills are, as far as like debuffs and things like that. Which, especially the water bison, water bison needs to do damage. Like the biggest thing is like these damage multipliers need to be. Higher. I don't know if Comptowist did that on purpose, made the damage multipliers not great, but also the speed is not great, right? 98, 98, 98, 98, 98. The HP is fantastic. Um, defense is fine. There's nothing wrong. I mean, they're HP uh, units, so high HP makes sense. Uh, speed, not anything crazy. You could use some more speed, but um, the biggest thing is they're, they're, they don't do that much damage. For, for tanky bruisers, they don't, they tanky, but they don't bruisey. Um, also, I think that, I think that some of them need higher debuffs and some of them need a little bit more than others. Uh, for this one, the provoke is nice. Provoke skill one is not bad. It's not a problem. Uh, double knee press. This is kind of cool. Absor I have this guy on two different accounts. I actually, I'm glad I got this one because I think this one is better than some of the other ones. So I have, uh, I have no problems getting him. One of my, uh, my one of my critiques is number one, the, the damage should be a little higher. Um, and then number two. Slightly higher activation rate on some of these, uh, or not some of these, on, um, yeah, slightly higher activation rate we need on these, uh, on these debuffs, though. A uh, little bit more of the debuffs. Again, like, this is one of those units that's, like, he's in the right direction. Just little tweaks to make him just a little bit stronger of this, because I think that he is definitely usable. He just needs to be a little bit more of the same, right? It's not that he needs to be reworked. Oh, come to us, go back to the drawing board, he's terrible. Just a, just more, just more right direction. Just needs to go a little bit further. Next on to the water and bison. Now this guy I feel really suffers from the fact that these bisons don't do that much damage. He does destroy HP. However, he doesn't his damage multipliers. He doesn't really destroy that much HP. So he really and he doesn't really. He's got provoke here. He's got also a provoke here. Damage based on max HP, but he doesn't do that much damage. So. The cool cool time is not is not any crazy cool time. Uh, I don't 
I think he really is one of the worst Nat 5s right now. I don't have him. Um, I've seen what he can do. I just feel... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If you guys have him and you're like, I love him, uh, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments how much uh, how much I'm wrong. Because I would love to be wrong on this. I would love for him to be a fantastic unit. And me be like, oh, okay. I just didn't see it that way. Uh, I just feel like he needs... Like, this is uh, not as uh, not as fun as this uh, second skill. Um, I mean, I, I have I have the Fire Bison. I would love to complain that he's like, he's the bad one. He needs a buff. But honestly, I'm just so glad that I got the Fire one instead of the, the Water one. Because um, the Water one, I mean, he's got to provoke. He's got to also provoke. But this is not that it does a crazy amount of extra damage. Um, or has like a very... It's just... It's, why, why do I care about this when it's this? Right? Um, and then the, the passive, it's just... I... I think he's one of the worst Nat 5s in, in the game. I'm trying to like be nice, but I think that he's one of the worst Nat 5s in the game. Um, hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, but I think he strongly needs a buff. Again, if you have the if you have the Water and Bison, uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong. Uh, so this one, Wind and Bison, uh, I do like the fact that he's got a 44% uh, defense uh, leader skill, which is not really as like for arena defense, it's like who cares? Um, for arena offense, you're not going to use him in uh, arena offense. I mean, I guess you could use him in arena offense. Because uh, this is at least still useful to... Uh, maybe not this one, it's still provoke. I don't like the provoke with skill 2 when the first skill provokes too. Like, give me something else and also maybe a little bit... Uh, and it also, it's, it's not like a 2 turn cooldown or something. Like, some of these net 5s have 2, tur uh, two turn cooldowns on skill 2. Um, I, I just don't like that. I like the uh, I like the fire one skill two better. Again, I like the fire one skill two better. Um, many people have mentioned, uh, and rightfully so, that this is just a wind version of the water cannon girl. Wind at five version of a water four star that we got as a as a hall of heroes. So um, and also she does more damage. So he's is he just a weaker version of the water cannon girl? Like that's kind of the thing. And here's the thing. As much as I'm saying he's a weaker version of a 4-star, I mean, he does have good stats, though, um, as far as, like, being, like, a, a tanky, right? A tanky unit, and he's got defense. The defense uh, defense leader skill is actually going to be not bad for uh, RTA, right? So it's not really for arena offense or defense. It's more for RTA. Um, even being a worse version of the water cannon girl, he's still better than the water uh, bison. That's how much I think the Water Bison needs a buff. Um, and then the Light and Dark Bisons. Didn't we play with them and they were a lot of fun? I believe that we played with them and they were a lot of fun. And Oh, this one. Again, I think we'll see him in RTA. This is going to be another one that, like, could be crazy in RTA. Basically, the whole concept of this one is he keeps provoking things and then increasing his attack age when he gets attacked by the things that he provoked, right? So he's got to provoke, he's got to provoke. I still wish this was a different second skill. Provoke second skill? All these Psycho Crusher provoke second skills need to be changed. I don't like this for any... These are Nat 5s. This is an LD5. He's got a, a provoke second skill that does no damage. whoop de doo Who cares? I'm, I'm being very savage. I apologize. Who am I apologizing to? I don't care. Uh, he's, he's not his bad second skill. Um, Black Moon's passive. This is kind of fun. Attack bar filled up uh, and your HP recovered if you get attacked during the turn of the provoked enemy. So basically you just provoke whoever has the highest attack age. And then he keeps turn cycling himself to crazy, crazy levels. He doesn't do any damage. He just put um, like violent revenge on him and very very fast and he could potentially just like not let anyone else get turns he just keeps provoking and provoking and provoking and provoking and keep cycling his attack age he doesn't do damage though i think the biggest thing with these guys is they just don't do damage are we done with the street fire units cool now on to some of the ogs of summoners war some of the original gangsters the poster children of the game the archangels so these are fantastic looking units i mean look at them you look at them and you say they have four wings they have giant swords suits of armor they look so awesome they do nothing well some of them do stuff some of them are good right uh you see veljul actually still being used you see artemiel being used you see fermion being used i know that these are like the more um the more popular ones that you see used in rta you really don't see too much of fermion the thing is with Fermion, like, he's still fun to use. He still does damage. He's still he's still a fun unit to play with. Um, 
Whereas if you have Ariel and Eladriel, also more people have Ariel and Eladriel than, uh, than the LV ones. Um, so there's more in circulation. They're not really doing too much. Like, where, where are you using uh, Ariel and Eladriel? Uh, are you using them for RTA? No. Not everything is about RTA. Not everything is about RTA. But are they used in RTA? Once in a blue moon. Usually not at all. Um, are they used in arena defense? Well, they used to be popular in arena defense, except that throughout the course of six years, people have gotten more accustomed to dealing with them, and they're really not... You don't see them in high-level arena defense. You see them maybe in, like like fighter levels of arena defense, but that's about it. Uh, maybe some in uh, in Conqueror, not really too many. You don't see any in a high level uh, arena, but someone's gonna, someone's gonna be like, listen, Bagel, I got Legend last week using Ariel. Really, I'm dying to hear how that happened. I really am. Uh, you, you really just don't see them uh, too much in Arena, though. So, um, not in Arena, not in RTA. They used to be fantastic in Arena. Both these guys used to be fantastic in Arena. I remember the, the first couple Legends, like, Legend ranks in Arena were, like, double, uh, double Eladriel, double Pernas. That was, that was the actual Legend team. I know some people are like, hold on! <laughs> Can I travel back in time to when that was actually a thing? Uh, this, again, was very popular early game. Uh, there were some very high G3 players. Uh, using Ariel all the time back in the old school days like six years ago. It was just about like Super tanky super tanky super tanky um, The game was very different back then uh, But yeah uh, They were more popular back in the day. They have not stood the test of time very well. Are they used in uh, Guild Wars or Guild Siege? This one's ter I mean all you have to do is bring a heal block and then he's basically done for you've seen him used a little bit in Guild War Guild Siege defenses um not really as much anymore. He was used a bit. Um, I don't know why I'm clicking on these. These guys are kind of fine. These guys are kind of fine. I think Fermion owners might be like, hey, give him a little something extra. But uh, something extra in, in one of these. But uh, these guys are fine. I would like for him to have like some other debuff. Just like a debuff with skill 2 or something. Like something with... Pu you know what? If they buffed punishment, where it was just something else instead of continuous damage... Maybe that would be cool, right? Because then that would buff Fermion and Vel... Not a crazy buff, but just buffing something in, like, on Punishment would buff both of those. Uh, and then I think that would bring them... Because they don't really need too much. They're, they don't need as much as Eladriel and Ariel. One of the things with Eladriel and Ariel, though... I mean, here's the thing. A lot of people have commented this, this lately, is that uh, Lulu exists now. So uh, Lulu's good enough that we don't really need Ariel. Uh, or that Ariel is really nothing. Um... So that's great for Lulu, but uh, but yeah, that's just that's just uh, what I've seen a lot of people comment on uh, the Ariel versus Lulu situation. But yeah, uh, it would be nice for him to have like some kind of immunity or some kind of cleanse or some kind of something else. Uh, same thing with Eladriel. So here's here's one thing that I like to keep um, keep pointing out is that if you take Eladriel versus something like a Marna or Tyrannus, Eladriel, if nothing needs to be revived, what does his skill three do? Nothing. His skill 3 does absolutely nothing. Um, if you take, uh, if you look at it versus Amarna, if nothing needs to be revived, Amarna can still heal. Amarna can still cleanse with skill 3, right? Uh, it can revive uh, unlimited allies uh, if they need to be revived. But if they don't need to be revived, can still cleanse, can still heal. And it's a nat 4, right? I mean, it's an LD4. It doesn't have quite the same base stats. Uh, Eladriel has much higher uh, HP, but... Uh, Amarna still, also, Amarna has a heal block, has a defense break, has a brand. So, Amarna's got a little bit more going for it. Um, and then Tyrannus, of course, to, the, the newer units are generally better. You know, anytime... In any of these mobile games, all the un new units are always better than the old units. That's how they get you to spend money on the new units. Because they're better, and if you want to stay good, then... <laughs> or get good, um, then you need the new units, right? So that's why the, the old units are generally not going to be as good as the new units just in general. But uh, but yeah, the thing with Eladriel is if he doesn't need to do skill 3, uh, if he doesn't need, nothing needs to be revived, then he's, his skill 3 does nothing. You look at Tyrannus, if nothing needs to be revived, he's, he could still soul protect something, he could still put a defense buff on something. So that's the thing that I think uh, with Eladriel and Ariel. They just need to do a little bit more. Uh, I would love to see, and I've mentioned this before, and other people, since I mentioned it, I think other people have started to, like, not catch on, but other people have started to join the, join the movement of, let's make these Archangels do some damage. 
Like, that would be cool to have, like, a damage uh, Eladriel or a damage Ariel and, like, have this... <laughs> I mean, I did do the range Ariel thing. Um, but I think it'd be cool to see, like, this does damage, this does damage, this does damage. Like, these things could do some damage because he stacks defense. Uh, and this does extra damage with his passive. And this does more damage with his skill 2's higher multiplier. But um, it would be cool to see, like, some more damage coming out of these Archangels in general. So I think buffs to skill 2 punishment would be great. Buffs to the skill 3s of both these guys. Because you can't buff these skill 3s. Uh, there's skill 2s on these. I mean, you could buff the skill 2s. But if you buff the skill 2s on those, you buff the skill 2 on Artemiel. I think Artemiel could use a cleanse on skill 2, too. It's not that he's, like... He's not as strong as he was a couple seasons ago. I think some people might not agree with me. But, like, as an Artemiel owner... He's not, he's still good. He's just not as strong as a couple seasons ago. Uh, so cleanse wouldn't like make him super crazy broken. Just it's a single target heal. Single target cleanse and heal would not make it, it like that crazy, guys. You may not agree with me, but I, I promise you it really wouldn't. Um, yeah, a cleanse and heal on skill two. It's just, a, again, it's just a single target. Um, and then something where, where a Ladriel does something if it doesn't need to be revived would be great. And then some more damage. I'm just, now I'm, this is a laundry list of like 9,000 different things that these Archangels need. That's enough talking about the Archangels. Seven minutes talking about the Archangels is way too long. But, uh, or maybe it's not, I just want to drive the point home, come to us. They're like, we're not watching this crap. Um, it's, t I think it's time. I think it's time that we see some, uh, some Archangel buffs though. You knew she was going to be in here, right? You knew Christina was going to be here. Here's the thing though. Uh, when we're talking about buffs or nerfs, Chris, it's not that Christina needs to be buffed to, like, do more damage. Like, for example, the Wind Ryu, more damage. More damage would make him better, right? Christina just needs to be reworked, rethought out, because she doesn't... She's a turn to cleave unit that's a wind unit in a meta where there are enough fire threats that love to kill things like Christina before she even gets a turn. Um... If she's going to be a turn 2 unit, she needs something that makes her tankier, uh, which she does not have. I think that she shouldn't even be a turn 2 unit. I think that she should just be reworked to not have, for this passive, to, to, to be something else. It's not this, like this in proportion to the number of allies alive, and then that this when uh, it accumulates up to 5 times and resets. Um, I think that she should just be a better turn 1 nuker. And the, the thing is, like, this Lucian exists, so uh, what does Christina really need? There's a lot of ways that they could go with Christina. I just think that instead of being a turn two uh, play unit, it really should, she really should be more of a turn one unit. In this meta, she... Or if she's going to be a turn two unit, she needs to have a passive to keep her alive and take less damage or something like that. Come back from the dead. She's not going to come back. She's a cannon girl. She's not going to come back from the dead. Anyway, she definitely needs to be... I Again, I just think that she needs to be rethought of in... Again, very different from the Wind Ryu. She needs to be rethought of. Not a better version. Just rethought of and retooled to be different uh, in her skills to be a turn one unit. Next on list, I don't think anyone expected me to bring these girls up today, but I think mostly that's because they forgot that these girls existed. The String Masters, with the exception of, like, the Dark One is pretty cool. Dark One's got a speed lead and also has this uh, damage increase skill is pretty nice, uh, especially with Lucian. I haven't played enough with the Light One to really give too many comments about her specifically, but I do know that this one also is pretty good. This, uh... She's limited by her base speed. She would be so much better if she had, like, an additional 15 speed. That would be fantastic, right? Then she'd actually be able to outspeed things. Uh, with 98 base speed, she can't really outspeed too much because she needs to outspeed her enemies to um, to do the, her song, which blocks them from getting beneficial effects, which is a really cool mechanic. Just she's pretty slow, which kind of sucks. And then we have this uh, stun, which is not bad. Um, so her, I think, of the normal elements, she is the most useful. I just always wish... I have her built. I just always wish she had... Uh, I have all of these built. Um, all three of these. Uh, I just wish she had a higher base speed. That's what I always wish. I'm like, oh, I should use her. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna get out sped for sure. So, uh, that's the situation with that one. For this one, she's very similar to Draco, Megan, Bastet, stuff like that. It's just, why would you really use... Hung Yon, a lot of people would just prefer to still use Bastard or Draco instead if they're going to cleave. Because she's got this, she increased attack bar 15% uh, and increased the attack bar. I think that there could be some situations where this is more beneficial. Because then it can't be stripped and then the unit can, you know, if someone comes in to strip in the meantime, 
not really gonna do too much and then but I still think that uh, this she needs to be a better version of this uh, at the very least and then she's got a guild war HP HP lead is cool but it doesn't quite I don't feel it makes sense with the Malay and melody to be honest I feel like those are two different things and then she still also suffers from low base speed um, they should figure out I guess what they want to do with her where they see her being used and then like go in that direction because you should always think about a unit like where do you see this unit being used and then and then retool it to be better for that specific thing that you see it being used um, so yeah that one's I mean she's still usable it's just like I would definitely say that I like the for attack bar boosters I like the fire Chun Li more than I like Hong Yon um, so anyway uh, then we have Yon Hua and she is just a sack of doo-doo. I mean, she's got... There's so much going against her. <sighs> there's so much going against her. She's uh, just a sack of doo-doo. She just doesn't really do much of anything. It's... Like, there's just every... I think she's one of the worst four stars. I do. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that a lot, I feel, in this video, but... That's the point, is that these units need buffs, so... Why else would they be, uh... If, there was, <laughs> if they weren't some of the worst units, they wouldn't need buffs. Um, she just does nothing. I mean, there's really not too much to say about her. Uh, she's a fat sack of doo-doo, uh, so I guess there's that to say about her. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the list that you guys voted on for your favorite Nat 5s, and we're gonna go look at who was the least voted on, and maybe talk about if they need any buffs or... <laughs> buffs or nerfs? I don't think if you guys voted on them the least, I don't think they need nerfs. Uh, cause otherwise why would they be on the bottom of the list? So first one is the Fire Beast Mog. I actually do like this guy. I don't really think that he needs a buff or anything. I mean, if Comptos buffs him, it's not that I feel like he's overpowered or anything. He's okay. He's a, he's a solid, like, Guild Wars kind of bruisery kind of unit. He's not, and he's also okay in, like, arena defense or things like that. Um, not super premium, but not, like, so garbage that he needs a buff or anything. Um, next one that you guys, but you guys voted him as like one of your least favorites. Next one is uh, Sekhmet, which I think, I mean, aside from her lows, again, another low base speed. Low base speed on him, low base speed on Sekhmet. Um, 99 base speed. So this, I think you are not giving her enough credit. This is pretty nuts. Uh, yeah, this is pretty nuts. The people that have tried this with like, especially on damage builds, this is pretty brutal. Also, this works really nicely into Tyrannus's. Uh, I am a Tyrannus lover, and anytime I try to pick Tyrannus in RTA, and someone knows how to counter Tyrannus and picks a Sekhmet, I'm like, okay, so I picked a friend Tyrannus, and uh, you brought the Sekhmet out, and I'm in big trouble. So, yeah, Sekhmet is, a, Sekhmet is an underrated unit, actually. I, I get that you guys don't like her, but she's an underrated unit. Um, people that really know how to play Sekhmet well, uh, do really well with her, and no, because you can't just use her everywhere, but, uh, especially, yeah, in big passive situations, but she does have her uses. And then, uh, Fire Paladin, on another one that is not really too loved, um, I think she could use a little, little something, something, little buff. I mean, she only has a Guild War leader skill, it's not like she can be used everywhere. Um, she's a nice combo with, like, a Messity and Bulldozer. I like to use her in Guild Wars with Bulldozer. Um, I know some people like to use her in RTA, it can be really annoying very, very fast in RTA because she's got that threat state. Um, not a super premium unit, could definitely, uh, I could definitely see her being buffed. I, I don't dislike using her, I use her every so often. Um, but I definitely see where you guys are coming from, where it's not like one of your favorites or anything. Uh, okay, let's move on to the water units. No, that's not water. <laughs> that's not water, Bega. Uh, water, hold on. Water, hold. Which which unit is that? Water, uh, Beast Monk. So this is another. He, it's not really too fun to use, right? He's got the stun. He's got the hug. He's got. He's effective in some Guild War defenses, but I think we're seeing him less now. We were seeing him a lot, and we're seeing him less now than when he was first. Uh, the the whole Jean uh, Chandra uh, combo kind of thing in Guild Wars. Again, you do do still see it somewhat, but less than you used to. It's kind of gotten phased out a little bit. I could definitely see him. This is, again, this is one of the ones that you guys voted on. Um, a different poll, but one of the ones that you guys voted on for units that you don't really like too much, and I definitely see that. Uh, I don't think... You guys didn't actually vote that this needs a buff, uh, but I definitely could see Camila getting some kind of 
Camila's not as big of a threat anymore, especially since Skogel can just solo Camila. Attack age reduction can just so like I feel like Camille needs a little something more. It's 2020. It's almost 2021. It's gonna be 2021 soon. Uh, I feel like Camille needs a little something more uh, in 2021. Um, so uh, you guys also said you don't like the art master. I I got him recently on the China server account. I've been playing with him. I think he's pretty fun. Um, maybe the passive could use. They did buff the art master passive though. But yeah, I do. I do kind of like the art master, though. I do kind of. I th he's not a pick everywhere situation, though. You can't just pick him and then you're good. Um, but I do kind of like the art master. But I could see him getting. A, I guess I could see him getting a little something. This is not 100% activation. It'd be cool to have 100% activation uh, on that skill or a defense break. They could just do a uh, do a defense break like Shung Pung, uh, Shung Pung got. Uh, and then that would make him definitely more useful. Also, you guys said, what do you guys say? This one, I kind of like him. They did give him a shield, though, recently. Or in the last, uh, the last one, right? No, shield here, shield here. Uh, creates a shield proportion to your level for one turn. Um, so, I do kind of like, again, he's not as used everywhere, but he does have, uh, ignore defense, right? So, I don't know that he's terrible. He could use a little something, I guess. Self attack power buff. Self attack power buff would be fun. But, uh, yeah, or maybe less turn cycling on his repeated nightmare. This guy, people thought was OP when he first came. People were like, oh my god, you gotta nerf this thing. It's so OP. And then everyone's like, you gotta buff this thing. I'm like, it didn't change. All it did was it got a buff. And then people were saying, like, it needs a buff after that. Just funny how perceptions on things change. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but this is another one that you guys didn't vote very very kindly on anything else you know what people didn't really vote for him what he would he had a decent amount of votes in this poll but i think chow could use a little something more on his passive right i feel like he could use a little something more on his passive all these guys do like dots on uh, skill one which is not very exciting for for these dragon knights i feel like they should they, they could use a little something more nowadays than just dots on skill one right uh i don't know what specifically but uh but yeah, anything else that was uh, super, super, uh, people considered super, super not exciting for, for those? I don't think so. Let's go take a look at the wind ones real quick. Uh, wind of Freet, which just already got buffed. Uh, last balance patch or the balance patch? Was it the last balance patch that got buffed? Uh, wind of Freet. Wind Paladin, not very exciting to use, but still does. The shield and immunity, guys, this is, uh, this is kind of underrated. For uh, for this one, then HP. This is a really good. Uh, this is a really good Guild Wars unit. Guild Wars Guild Siege, not bad. Uh, what else? There was really not too much. Oh, and the Wind Archangel, Wind Canago, which we already discussed. Really, like all the other ones we kind of discussed, for uh, not being not being that exciting. Uh, let's take a look at the least voted on. Eld no, LDs. Yeah, LDs, LDs, LDs. So, uh, the, the ones that, uh, the, the least loved LD units. Light Beast Monk. I see, I mean, say what you will about the Light Beast Monk. The, the Light Beast Monk. I'm just glad that he got uh, buffed more than, uh, yeah, I'm just glad he got some. Because he wasn't even this good. People still don't like him. People still don't like him. He wasn't even this good. His, his base speed is not that great. Um, I like him. I use him every so often. I do, I use him every- I really do use him every so often. I have him on destroy. Uh, maybe that helps. I have him destroy for like a bruiser build with some crit damage. Um, but yeah, I don't- I don't dislike him. He's got some, uh, he's got a heal, he's got a defense break on skill 1, he's got the glancings and provokes and stuff. He's better than he used to be. If you guys don't like him now, <laughs> he's better than he used to be. Um, yeah, he's better than he used to be. Geldnir, again, people not really too crazy about the Geldnir. Um, he's not a fun unit, and all you have to do against him is bring a heal block, and he's done. Um, he did get a buff. He is better than he used to be, but you still don't really see him too much in RTA or anything, or Guild Wars or anything. Anything. You really don't see him too much anywhere, so his buff his buff was better, made him better, but still not, uh, still, still Storage King. Uh, sea Emperor, another one that you guys voted that he was not one of your most beloved uh, LDs. Um, he's got he's got a speed lead, which I think is good. He's got a speed lead. He's got the uh, silence. He's also has immunity and invincibility. Um, 
But again, not something. I mean, I saw Baryon using him, but Baryon is Baryon. Baryon could win with uh, basically anything. So, uh, yeah, he's got some some combos that he could uh, he could be nice with, but I could see him getting a little uh, little something something. I also think that the dark one could get a little something something, right? The dark one is uh, the dark one's got this, and then he does kind of the splash damage like Pungbeck does. But I could see the dark one getting a little uh, a little something too. I mean, he's an LD five, right? LD5 should be like, we should be questioning if these units are too strong, right? But I feel like that should be the situation with the LD5s. Um, I think that was like, for the most part, those are the ones that people were complaining about for the LDs. Are there any other LDs I feel like people didn't... Uh... I thought people were going to complain a little bit more about the Oracle and Occult Girl. Because some people, or, or, or the, uh, the Nagang. Um, but people really did not uh, complain too much about those from what I see in this data that I'm looking at. So, but I can see maybe like them doing so, like if they do something with those, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that crazy. Uh, you know what? I think Nyx would be cool if he was not so situational. Nyx has some uses, don't get me wrong. Uh, you can definitely use Nyx in some teams. I just wish he was more flexible to use him in other teams. Uh, that's, I don't think that's even anything that people voted on. No, people didn't really have too much of a problem. As fr from the data that I'm seeing, it wasn't like a super unloved unit. Oh, the Dark Sea Emperor that I mentioned before. Uh, kind of one of the more unloved ones for the Dark ones. Uh, what else? Dark Beast Monk as well. Uh, in addition to the Light Beast Monk, people don't really like... I think people just don't like these Beast Monks. Beast Monks were just not very loved across the board in this uh, poll. So... Yeah, uh, Beast Monk, Phoenix. People just don't like these Beast Monks, apparently. Just give them Guild War Leader skills, come to us. It's the easiest way to fix these Beast Monks. Um, Dark Ifrit was not really voted too highly. Uh, Dark Phoenix. Dark Anubis. Eh, Dark Anubis could do some kind of debuff. I, it would be cool to see some kind of debuff on this Dark Anubis, too. Um, Veramos. Veramos has his uses. I, I, I don't love Veramos in everything. He's got some uses, though. He's got some. Counter pick for some teams. Uh, he's got some uses. Anyway, uh, I think that's about it, though. I think that's about it from what I see. Uh, there's nothing that's, like, glaringly terrible to me. Um, some things are more niche than others. Some things are more for RTA. Some things are terrible in RTA, but more for other content. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's it for this one, I guess. Is there anything else that I wanted to include? Hold on. We need to buff, uh, we need to buff this guy right here. Buff the uh, Dark Monster Flower. No, uh, that's it for this one. I already talked way too long. I don't need to talk anymore about anything else. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think I, I tried to get a lot of your guys' uh, input from the, the information that I have over here. Um, and then also say the most pressing ones, which are really, to, to me, the most pressing ones are like the Street Fighters and the Archangels. Um, I think a lot of stuff is already good. Maybe not everything is good for every different place, though. So, you, you like, some of you guys might be like, oh, this unit is great in RTA. Well, I don't do RTA, so I don't even care about it, right? So then what am I going to do with this unit? I like, I want something for arena offense. This LD5 that I have that's good for RTA does not help me with arena offense, you know what I mean? So, there's that, uh, there's that situation. Everyone plays differently. Everyone's focused on different content. But uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this one. We'll see soon. Uh, and it's, it should be it should be happening soon because I tried to trick Comp to us and <laughs> tried to trick someone from Comp to us as I always do into giving me secret information. They gave me not very much, but enough to know that it's probably uh, which we already expected to come soon. Uh, bounce patch to come soon, but they it kind of sounds like it's gonna come soon. So uh, again, end of RTA season. SWC is not uh, in season, so. Uh, probably going to be a decent balance patch and they've been listening to user feedback this year so or player player feedback um, so we may actually see something pretty substantial uh, let's hope anyway I'm excited to see what it is anyway that's it for this one I will see you guys as always hope you guys enjoyed it I will see you as always in the next one